Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Second Act Actors. I'm your host, Dr. Janet McMorty, and I'm still a medical doctor simultaneously trying to pursue a career in acting. My guest this week is a fellow medical doctor trying to pursue a career in acting. My guest this week is Dr. Indy Saluja. Oh, Indy. What a guy. We've been friends for a while. We are part of the small but very mighty Dr. Actors group. He is my third Dr. Actor on this show. I'm so, so, so excited for you to hear his story. He's an emergency room doctor here in, I don't know, the great GTHA, greater, I don't know, he's here in Ontario. He's in Canada. We're buddies. Again, like I said, I've known him for a while. He is absolutely fabulous. We talk about everything that has to do with medicine, medical training, the trauma that comes with medical training, and how we break down that emotional restraint that we need as doctors, the walls that we build up as doctors, because we see some horrific things. He especially sees horrific things in the emergency room. And then literally the next patient, he has to wipe that slate clean and be the friendly, happy doctor or attempt to be uh, for a brand new patient every, you know, five to ten minutes. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited for you to hear a story. Please enjoy the incredible Dr. Indy Saluda. realizing you are now my third doctor actor i've talked to oh nice yeah i heard a couple of Hell them actually yeah. on your podcast yeah yeah i don't know if did so you yeah, have any er me... doctors i don't know if you had any, any er doctors no no exactly so yeah tell me your story how did you get into this acting crazy business from emerge well yeah that's that's an interesting question so i mean i got into a merge getting to emerge is a whole story on its own um, in the end, it ended up being a great fit for me. Um, I like the diversity of it, and I, I've always wanted to do something like science right? There is an art to medicine, as you know, as a, as a doctor, but, uh, you know, there was always something kind of kind of missing. Um, people might be surprised to hear this, but as a doctor, you, you do put up walls. I mean, you have to, uh, to survive in this profession because uh, you see so many things, especially, you know, when we're frontline, um, you know, as interesting as a, and exciting as that is, you do see a lot of bad things uh, or sad things. And you can't just carry that with you um, everywhere you go, especially even to even the next patient you're seeing. Um, you know, you can't really bring that with you. So uh, it's amazing after how long I've been in the ER doctor for how much I have got those calls. Because you are protecting yourself. And uh, acting is, is the opposite. I mean, you're, you're being vulnerable and you're bringing all those walls. Uh, so I found that actually extremely challenging. Uh, you asked, like, mm. why, what pushed me into it? Well, I, you know, I do like pushing myself. I do like challenging myself. But I also love uh, that art. I've, I've always been, I've always done things like that. Um, even when I was a, a physician, I always got into filmmaking. We produced some small little films and parodies. Uh, I always was interested in it. It just wasn't a realistic, I guess, career choice. Um, I felt at the time. Um, now it's funny because I thought of all kinds of careers. I mean, something in the sciences, you know, I thought of being an astronomer. I thought of, I even almost studied kangaroo rats in California. Who knows what I would have done? Um, you know, I, I was walking in a science building and I remember at McMaster and I saw an MCAT sign. I'm like, Interesting. I haven't really, you know, I always thought of medicine and, you know, being brown and my parents always mentioned medicine. Um, you know, I'm glad they did because I don't know if I would have really gone into it. Um, as that wasn't even in the back of my mind. And then I started volunteering in hospitals. I'm like, you know, this is kind of interesting. There's a lot of rich experiences you have with patients and, and interaction with, with people. Mm. But again, getting into it and working as a physician now, um, you are missing that other other side of things, uh, being truly yourself. You are doing a bit of a, of a performance uh, for patients in some way. I mean, you are playing a, a role uh, as a professional, as, as their advocate, um, you know, as their support system. Um, but that's different than taking on uh, a character. 
you know, in the acting world. So I've always had an interest, I guess. I mean, I'll always remember, you know, when I was in uh, grade school and then in high school, I always acted in plays. But I'll remember in grade school, I played the lion in, in Wizard of Oz. And I remember staring, this is like a core memory for me. Like I remember staring at an audience member during a really funny part and he looked at me, he gave me this big smile and then all of a sudden the whole audience started just burst out laughing because I, I really tracked onto this this guy for some reason. And I remember that feeling. I'm like, this is fun. Uh, you know, I, I find it really enter entertaining to entertain others. I, I really got a charge of that. Um, so that's always kind of been there. But the other thing, Jen, this is a really long answer, but <laughs> the other thing is... No, I love it. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the other thing is that what, what draws me to acting is there's very few mediums or avenues where you can change the heart and mind of somebody in such a short period of time. Um, I find it very powerful. And I just see this as a potential platform for me in the future. Um, hopefully when I, if I get traction or um, ability to do this or get a, you know, a wider audience um, to be able to, you know, push stories or, or tell stories that other people have not heard before. I mean, it creates empathy in others that's that's hard to do um and mm. you know it's a funny example for me but you know blood diamond may not be the greatest movie example but it did impact me um you know uh i know that movie had its issues but the performances were were good mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and jimon hansu uh you know played the father uh in this movie took place in sierra leone a lot of uh focus on on child soldiers and, and uh the diamond industry and just his, the way he, his love as a father for his son, who was, who's captured and recruited into, uh, you know, uh, uh, fighting in, in the civil war uh, that was taking place in the nineties was just, it really hit me and seeing the scenery in Africa. So what, how did that impact me? I went to Africa in three months after that, you know, after seeing that movie. Um, that's a big thing, I think. That was a big decision to make. I wanted to see Africa. I wanted to, you know, be with the people and, and volunteer. Um, and then it also inspired me to think, oh, I'd love to play a father. I'd love to do that. Mm. Being a father myself, um, you know, maybe it's me. Maybe it's my, my selection. I don't see very often this portrayal of these fathers and so, you know, just the love they show to their kids. Mm. I don't know how often I, I see that. Uh, yeah. I know what happens. I know what happens. Um, but I just don't see it that often. And I think, uh, that's, that's one way I'd love to express myself. Jim, in film or TV television show. He played a father again in Grand Turismo too. I'm like, you did it again to me. He just, <laughs> you know, I, I just loved, uh, uh, I just love those kind of roles. Anyway, it's one of those things that I feel is, is adding something else to my life I was, I was missing. And I just find it such a powerful medium to tell stories and just the impact you can have on audiences, I think is unlike anything else. Hmm. Were you acting throughout your medical training? Like, was there uh, an acting career kind of always simultaneously along with the medical training you were doing? Or did that start just recently? Yeah, no, I didn't really do any uh, formal training at all. I, as I mentioned, I did some stuff kind of on the side and, you know, produced and directed these little shorts just for fun. Um, but never anything on a professional basis. Um, really, I started actually doing background uh, acting because mm -hmm. I wanted to see what a set is like, what are, what are these terms mean? What's an AD? <laughs> what, what do they do? Why is there a first, second, and third? You know, what do these guys do? Uh, and I didn't want to feel silly. And you know, I, I, you're like me probably in a lot of ways, you're a little type A kind of personality to, to get into medicine, even in the first place, you have to have a little bit of that. You're, yeah, you're maybe more than I am, but, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, that's not a bad thing. It's, it's, it's a good thing, but I, I like to do my research and I like to, uh, understand what am I getting into? Um, mm. So I started with that well after medical school, well after I started working. Because um, ER is one of those few, uh, I guess, specialties where I can insert auditions and, and set time 
a little more easily. Mm. Uh, I can switch my yeah. shifts. I can decide how much I want to work. It is one of those things. I, you know, I couldn't have a family practice and then just cancel all my patients. You know, my secretary would hate me. My 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 patients would hate me. It, it's just too. You just didn't do that. Um, yeah. You know, certainly you have a responsibility um, when you when you become a physician to your patients. But you know, if I can just change my shift and it doesn't affect anybody, uh, why not? So. You know, I was even able to switch for a movie I did a few years ago, take off two weeks because I could just switch my shifts. It's just one of those fun. Anyway, so I started I started in background, um, which led to some fun experiences, I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, but that led me into really deciding, you know what, I, I do want to do this, but it's not easy mm. and I need to train. Mm. So I drove uh, from Waterloo to Toronto, you know, several times a week for years. Um, mm -hmm. uh, training at all the big all the big studios uh, to learn the craft. And, oh, man, I, I remember my first classes. I'm like, wow, I don't know how to do this. Uh, uh, this is really hard. Uh, I'm not present. I'm building. I'm putting up walls. I'm not even listening. Uh, it, was, it was insane. I, I'm like this, you know, it, it's true what they, you know, there's nothing easy. And it's, it's just as hard as anything else. You have to put in time. You, know? you can't just... You know, maybe some people can can be a bit more natural with it, but even those people still have to put in some time and and uh, uh, learn the industry and and eventually get their auditions and hopefully book someday. Um, something that changes their life and something that mm. they, you know that launches them into a career where they can do this on a regular basis. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, you know it, it was a bit of a, a process, and then I finally signed on with my. Um, a current agent just about four years ago with uh, Novo Capital, and that's where I, I would say I really started this kind of on a professional basis. Mm. One of the things that you kind of mentioned that I want to just touch on, and you said it very briefly, that something was missing uh, like, with medic with just just pursuing medicine, right? And I think, yeah. As an aside, as somebody who literally empathizes with everything that you're saying, because I've done the same thing, you know, medicine is a career where the training is so life encompassing that you can only like you have to tunnel vision focus yourself on finishing your medical training, especially residency where you're just and I mean, and you did a world. Did you do Royal College residency or did you do plus one and emerge? I did a plus Regardless, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regardless, it's all encompassing residency is like hell. Oh, yeah. Um, like what was what kind of clicked or what did you notice was missing? What happened that said, oh, my God, I can't just be a doctor. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting you mentioned the training. I mean, it was it was, it was a bit traumatizing. And stuff. And this I yeah. trained uh, before Carol rules. So I was on call mm. one and two. You know, uh, so I would be up every two nights, all night, and then you don't get to go home at nine o'clock the next day. You stay all day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they used to have a joke on on surgery, like what's the downside of being on one and two call? And that was, well, you miss half the cases. <laughs> like really, you should be on call every day. Oh my uh, god! You know, it was <laughs> that mentality, right? The culture um, is so oh, bad. Yeah. And I, you know, my twenties were spent training. Uh, I really didn't live other than in the hospital. Um, and so I, I think a lot was missing. Uh, you know, yeah. it's hard to, to have a relationship. It's hard to have a social life. Um, it's hard to be a, a human being during that time. But having said that, I mean, these were important experiences for me. I did mm. have many, many rich experiences with patients, uh, of course. Yes. Those wasn't by myself awesome um experiencing many you know when i look back many rich enriching experiences many uh many stories i'll never ever forget and you bring that with you um that just becomes who you are right you know what does jimmy mcgill say you know when he was taping is whenever he tapes something he would always be like gravitas you need gravitas and that he brought his experience you know into into it just before he taped anything um, and, and that's what you, you bring with you um, as an actor. So I think those experiences did make me who I am today. And I'm not sure I, I would be the same actor if I start, started. Uh, there's always mm -hmm. that, 
there's always that stress in the back of your mind, right? It's like, I'm sure you felt this. I mean, I think you mentioned this in your podcast before where you're like, am I starting too late? Did I miss out mm -hmm. on something? You know, not going to theater school and doing this first and that. And now like, I've lost so much time. Um, but you also bring, I, I think people who come out just directly from school are also missing some of that life experience, which, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of these characters need to have that. It's hard to imagine all of it. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think just focusing so much, like you mentioned, being so ultra focused on one thing, uh, that's what made me feel like, okay, well, what else is out there in life? And what my outlet, like anybody else who's stressed or is, is going, is going through something in life, they'll listen to music, they'll, they'll read poetry, they'll read, they'll read novels, they'll watch movies to distract themselves, to escape. And I'm like, this is, this is what everyone goes to. This is important. Um, I want to do this too, you know? Uh, and I, like I said before, it's, it's, uh, it's part of my brain that I really wasn't using enough. Um, mm. And, you know, focusing on sciences and, and, and when you're training as a resident here, you're just reading medical textbooks like all the time, like that's all you're doing. Um, so that, uh, I, I wanted something else. I wanted something more than that. And I felt like uh, because of my interest, even as a child, you know, making movies in my garage, in my parents' garage, we put firecrackers, uh, you know, in my shirt. I remember my dad was like, there's holes in my sweater. I'm like, yeah, we lit firecrackers because I was getting shot in the scene. And he was like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we just did this in the, in the garage, you know, with <laughs> This is going to date me, but my, with my Commodore 64 keyboard is, you know, my, <laughs> is my spaceship, uh, you know, <laughs> computer system. And, you know, it's just, it, that was all, that, that kid in me was always there. I think when you're acting, mm -hmm. you are kind of a, a kid in a lot of ways. You're, you're taking on a, a persona, a role, and you're escaping your life with that too. You are, you are kind of empathizing with some with someone else who's not you and you're you're walking in their shoes as much as you can and, and it takes you away from your own life a little bit um and i find it i find that fascinating I find that uh, very rewarding and it's it's a break for me hey getting auditions is stressful but i also find it exciting like don't you feel when you get an audition in your email you're like okay okay let's yes. get this this is gonna be fun yeah. let's read this let's research uh, we all have different approaches course um but you're again i think like me in a lot of these ways you're gonna put a lot of time into this and and, and research it and and look up everybody and uh i find that i find that very a lot of fun yes yeah absolutely and i think it's funny how like you mentioned all the things that you bring in from your your foundation from the years leading into your acting career from what you learned as a resident the experiences yeah what residency was literal hell for me for everyone the trauma but i love that the yeah the goodness that was there the interactions with patients and with colleagues and stuff developed me into the person that i am today do you notice are there any other similarities between your practice of medicine and now your craft of acting uh, I mean, I guess in, in Emerge, you're always getting thrown into new and stressful situations. Like, I can't say I'm ever mm. bored. Mm. You know, one of the things that attracted nah. me to, to Emerge was you never know what's going to come in. Um, and there's that yeah. adrenaline rush. And then you got to adjust and think on the spot and, and then connect with a patient very quickly. Uh, you know, you have to have that connection and you have to read that patient also very quickly what, what kind of personality are they hey is this a time for a little humor is this a time for seriousness you have to gauge that incredibly quickly and, and most importantly you have to listen um you know that's uh huh. you know you're gonna get the diagnosis 80 percent of the time from the history um and if you're not listening you're gonna you're gonna waste time or or spend money on, on more tests that you may not need um and why what is what is acting you're reacting you're you're listening to the other person. And I think that's uh, one of the biggest similarities. You're, you're always, when you're on set or you're, you're doing an audition, it's a, it's a new experience. 
where you're in a new location, new people, you're always meeting new people. And you all, to, all of a sudden, okay, this is my scene partner. I got I to gotta connect with him. And, and we got to do this serious thing together. It's a serious thing. Um, you know, this is a serious scene. Well, when I'm seeing someone in Emerge, I'm usually seeing people at a point in their life, at some a very brief time, very important time in their life, usually. It's something mm-hmm. fairly memorable for them. Not necessarily in a, in a good way, necessarily, but it is something that has affected them. You know, it can even just be a broken ankle. People always remember when they broke their ankle, what happened? And, mm-hmm. and, and when I went to the hospital, they did, they did this and that, and they and they gave me this white stuff, and they put me to sleep, and they, and they put it back. And, you know, people remember these stories, right? Um, it is an important part of their life that they will always remember. Um, mm. So it's, it's it's a crucial time, and it's an important time, and you have to, you have to remember that. And, and the same thing when you're doing doing a scene, this... You know, scenes are just, you know, every scene that's written is there's a purpose to it and there's an importance to it, uh, to the story. Um, and you have to have that connection with the other actor and you have to be listening. To them. I think that these are really big similarities that, that, uh, between being between the nurse doc and being an actor. And of course, if I ever, whenever I audition for a role as a doctor, it helps. <laughs> You it know, helps. I have no issues yeah. with the terminology. I know how to use, no. the, you know, the instruments. And, you know, it's, <laughs> I remember I was on a show with uh, Keith or Sutherland as a, um, you know, as a SSC, like a, just, just when I was doing background, you know, I have experience in medicine. So, you know, I was teaching the other actors how to use, you know, the, the instruments in the OR and stuff like that. So it does come in handy uh, in those kinds of roles as well. Totally. And I know I always put, or my agent always puts in the submission notes if it's ever a doctor. Well, I never audition for doctor roles, but like nurse or like ultrasound tech. It's always like, Janet McMorty is an actual real medical doctor. (laughs) I've been asked to do that even in my slates, right? Like they're like, you know, I've I've actually, I've had them say like, look, we didn't ask for that, but like put it in your slate. So that we can, when we send it, when we send it, they'll be like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, that's yeah. good. You know what? Maybe, yeah. maybe that is your edge, uh, to this. I mean, mm. it is funny though, Janet, I don't know. You said you haven't, I'm surprised you haven't auditioned for many adopter roles, but, um, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's a very different playing one. It's very interesting. I, I don't know. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how to even I've describe only, I've only why, done... but. Yeah. You were on, I mean, you did, you helped him with good Sam. I think you were kind of doing. But hand, I was hand double the surgical hand double. Hand doubles, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, I, yeah, I do find it's a bit of a different because you're kind of you're not really doing what you really, you know, what you'd actually do. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. a lot of the a lot mm-hmm. of the procedures are are modified. A lot of the interactions are are really not necessarily how you <laughs> how you talk, but you also understand why they're doing it. So so it is funny. I, I mean, you you think. Oh, I'd be nailing all these auditions to be a doctor, but no, not necessarily. And, and you know, it's funny. Like even the auditions I get, like 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 transplant, for example. I'm like, I never auditioned to watch. Uh, Me what, either. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Like, I, I don't know how. Yeah. Is it, and I, I've also had this this controversy too, um, where people have asked, "Do you bring up that you're a doctor, and do you think that's a good mm. thing or a bad thing?" Mm. You know, I, I'm not sure what the answer to that is. You know, it's bringing up that you're a physician when you're in an audition uh, for any reason. Does that take them out of that? Oh, he's not a real actor. Or does that help? I, I, maybe it depends on the audition. But um, I've I've had that question asked to me a few times. I'm like, that's very interesting. Uh, I don't actually know. Um, and maybe it depends. Yeah. Maybe it's not always the same answer. But uh, yeah. 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 It, it definitely well, hasn't. He... Like, like landed me so every ahead. role I auditioned for, right? Because um, usually back when I first started, I always mentioned it. Now I don't necessarily. Mm. It's interesting, right? Because I think there's the initial, like if I take myself out of myself and if I try and look at it as a casting director or as a director and somebody says I'm a doctor, yeah, they'd be like, so how do you have time? And I'm sure you get asked this yes. all the time. Oh, how do you have that. time to do that? Yeah. And maybe yeah. that worries them. And I think what's hard, right? maybe it worries them, right? But you're like, do you not understand that I have the perfect 
epitome A plus type A time management skills because yeah. I'm a doctor? <laughs> Are you questioning whether or not I can do yes. this? Because I yes. can do it. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. No, Bring 100%. It on. But then it's also, are they wondering, okay, well, you have some training, but are you really, is this just a hobby? Is this, um... right? So, so the, this, this plays, this is, this, I've thought about this more recently. I'm like, well, like I've, I've really committed to this. I've cut back on my shifts. I've, I've really spent a lot of time focusing on this, but yeah, I wonder how much that plays, you know, I, this, there's such competition in this that one little thing yeah okay next right like like it doesn't take much yeah. probably um uh mm -hmm. to to be like yeah you know what he's making good money anyway <laughs> he's doing fine in life um and he probably doesn't have time for this so let's just see the next one right like i i don't know how yeah. much that i don't know how much that plays plays a role now i'm i'm still getting auditions and stuff like that so i don't really know um you know how much it does affect uh people but maybe maybe it does on some level uh it's a hard question to answer but i, I it's it's interesting over the over time i've i've mentioned it less yeah me too and here's yeah. what i'm hoping i'm hoping well one as we always hope which we know is never the case a lot of the time that our talent speaks for itself but yeah. also, I'm hopeful that as we gain more experience in this industry, we start to get to know the casting directors, they start to get to know us, and they go, oh, yeah, he, and they can, and we hope also our agents advocate for us, and also we advocate for ourselves, saying, yes, I am a doctor, yes, I am a lawyer, yes, I am a cop, yes, I am a whatever, but, yeah. you know, they can do it because look at what they've already done, and yeah. we now know them really well, and don't worry about it. In fact, this is a huge advantage to your production. Yeah. And I think sometimes it would be seen as an advantage uh, for sure. I think that trust yeah. certainly has to be there. I agree, Janet. I mean, uh, uh, the trust has to be there. And, and I think you just have to do a series of auditions for every casting directors. And then they'd be like, yeah, okay. Uh, this is consistent. Uh, you know, he keeps bringing it. Um, yeah, okay, I trust him now. You know what? Uh, maybe we'll take yeah. a, maybe we'll give him a chance on this bigger role now. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that goes for anybody, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think my. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's. I think that 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 plays a role for everybody. I think everybody has to gain that trust from casting directors, no matter what they're about. Yeah. Um, you know, casting directors are, are are smart people. They're not going to necessarily use this against you. Um, uh, I think they would hopefully see. Whatever your experience is in life, because everyone's coming from something that totally okay. They can they're bringing this to the role, um, but you also have to bring your you also have to have some skill. See yeah, how to act. I'm also I'm also hopeful of, and I've said this a lot about you know <laughs> the whole survivor motto like outwit, outplay, outlast. It's yeah. the outlast that's most important, right? I'm hopeful, like, the longer we stay in this industry, the longer we keep auditioning, the more people will realize, oh, if they thought of this as just a hobby or just a money-making scheme yeah. or just, like, I want to get famous fast, we would have yeah. quit years ago. Totally, totally. Yeah. And I think uh, I think when you're this committed um, as we have been over the last several years, you know, I didn't, I didn't go into this to get famous. I, I, you know, I went into this to learn the craft and, and tell stories and, 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 and pick on characters, right? Like, uh, it's, uh, I think, I think they will start to see that. I agree. Um, yep. you know, we're in this for the long haul, um, uh, continue to commit. I just signed up for another class again. Um, just because with the writer strike and everything, I'm like, ah, it's, you know, uh, we haven't done as much, uh, in the last uh, mm -hmm. year or so. Um, so yeah, continuing to continue to learn uh, is something that's very important. I think they they see that they see that dedication, and know okay, well yeah, they, they don't want to just quickly just you know get a big role and think oh this is this is easy and because it's not easy. Uh, yeah, I am honestly very appreciative of of the opportunities I've had. Uh, you know, these casting directors have certainly been open to uh, diversity and that sort of thing. Uh, it's not also up to them in the end. Um, who gets cast in these roles um, is so many people involved, right? It's 20, 30 other people decided. And uh, I know they are, they are putting me forward for, for certain roles. It doesn't mean I'm getting them. 
but uh, you know, I think they they are starting to appreciate the fact that yeah, I'm still around. Still around, yeah. Something you mentioned, and I every every doctor actor I've spoken to, the other two and myself have mentioned this and labeled it. We gave ourselves a diagnosis when you talked about putting up walls as a physician, right? Yeah. Uh, the diagnosis being emotional restraint um, mm-hmm. is one that um, my friend, Dr. Decker, Dr. Dr. Decker, Francesca Decker, who's a, um, a, do- a public health doc down the state. So that's what she labeled it as, right? And we yeah. have to, like you said, to survive, to avoid burnout, because if we invested emotional intelligence and just uh, sympathy and empathy and all the feels into every single patient we'd see, I would have burnt out years ago. Um, what, tell me about what you've done that you found helpful to, like you said, break down those walls for acting because you have to do the exact opposite when you're in a scene. Still working on it. Um, but I'd say, (laughs) I'd say some of the things are, uh, it's taken some time to be truly comfortable and vulnerable in front of other people. And that takes practice. Mm. Uh, Mm. that's where classes kind of came in. Um, is to have to, you know, my, f- my first actual class I took was at Pro Actors Lab and it's scene study. And the way they did it, uh, was actually, they taped it and they would pause like on every expression. So you'd be like, okay, well, well what were you thinking here? And what were you doing here? I'm like, wow, this is really, that's, but important. Huh. I'm like, I've never watched myself yeah. like this. Um, and then it huh. forces you to explain that. And then sometimes I'd be like, I don't think I was thinking anything, <laughs> right? I was so nervous. I, I, I was thinking of my lines and they're like, yeah, that shows. And you're like, and you're uh, like, yeah, it does. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to be an actor to, to understand a good performance. You, you know, when you see a good performance and when someone is present and telling their truth, right? You, you can tell. Um, and, and so it's just taken time getting comfortable doing that in front of other people, being embarrassed and being okay mm. with that. It is embarrassing a lot of times actually acting and showing your emotions. Um, so part of that has been, you know, I took some uh, classes where you focus on breathing and focus on, you know, uh, your body and that sort of thing, which I've never really taken before. That helped quite a bit, just being present in your, in your body. And then really, it it takes ultra so much focus um i find if you focus Mm -hmm. on the other person and what they're saying you forget about everything else around you because at the beginning when i first was training i was thinking am i am i doing this right uh (laughs) do people like my acting uh wait what's my next line again okay hurry up and finish your line Mm -hmm. so i can get to my line um because I'm still type A, I have to get every word exact, which doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, I said, you know, if instead of and, oh my God, I'm, I'm horrible. Um, and then you start to realize, because part of this is, you don't under- I didn't know the industry. I didn't know anything. No. Uh, I can in learn our, from, I learned from our other actors. Industry. Yeah. It, in our industry, if we say the wrong thing, people die. Yeah. <laughs> You have to be, yeah, like you're, you're, you're so, we're so type A about this stuff and so exact and, you know, doing this has to be messy sometimes. Um, and th- so breaking out of what I'm used to doing uh, has, has, has been a challenge. Part of it also is, it, you know, stuff I've just learned in classes, right? Like, uh, okay, so imagine that person that you just met and you're doing a scene with and it's a very important scene is someone else. Uh, all the usual stuff that you, you learn in, in, in classes is just in different ways and in different terminology. You know, LB acting studio is very, you know, be a human being. Like, what, what is, you know, this is, it's so hard being a human being because we're all on autopilot, walking around, walking around, not paying attention, not absorbing what you're, what you're seeing. It's amazing. We all do this, right? All of us do. Everyone is protecting themselves. Um, not just doctors, everyone is. And uh, they focus on like, just, just being human, just, listen to the person opposite you and leave everything else in your life behind. And that takes mm-hmm. training, that takes time, that takes practice. And it, the way that works for you is different for me. Um, it's one of those things that you just have to keep trying 
okay, well, I'm going to bring, I'm going to think about this really sad thing that happened to me off the top of the scene. And maybe that'll come up later when we talk about the sad part of, in the scene. You have to, you have to use your experiences in life as well. Um, and when you're in the scene, you know it. Because after you forgot what happened. And you could feel, it's, you know what, I, yeah, I was there. I forgot there were 10 people watching me in this class. Um, so I think, I think it's important to train in safe environments where you feel safe, where you, where you, where you understand. A lot of good teachers and coaches will explain at the very beginning, look, we're not judging anybody. Uh, this is a safe environment. Uh, you know, mess up here. This is the place to mess up. This is the place to experiment. This is the place um, to explore some of those emotions. You know, we're not psychiatrists. We're not going to counsel you. Don't talk to us about your, your traumas and all that kind of stuff. Leave that in your own head. We don't know how you, we don't want to know why you got to where you are or how, but do what you need to do to get there. But in a safe way, right? That, this, this, you, can, you can go down a rabbit hole and, and act in it. It's a very, you know, being mentally strong and, and keeping those compartments separate sometimes and not going too, too deep into some of the things that are really, affected you in your life is, is a hard balance and again that's mm -hmm. that's different for everybody how they do that yeah so i mean you touched on how like being a doctor has influenced your acting have you noticed the opposite has your acting influenced your medical career interesting um i mean it's it's uh it's it's been a big big demand on my time <laughs> as opposed as, ah. as for the job so a lot of a lot of time management, hundred percent. So I've had to adjust shifts and that sort of thing. So that's just a very practical thing. That's you know that, that's how it's affected me practically, but and logistically. But in terms of my job itself, I think it's so funny. You know, I have probably allowed myself to be a little bit more vulnerable sometimes. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I but I am, and just a tiny, just a little bit more. Um, because I find, I have found the interactions, they, they, I've been more connected in, in some ways with, with people and not to the point where, you know, I'm taking on, they're painfully, obviously, but I find they're also feeling that and they, mm. and they see you as more empathetic, uh, and they see you as more caring, um. So I, I've, I've brought a little bit of that. I feel like a little bit more when I talk to people. I'm also, I'm finding I'm more interested in people's life stories. Now, now, now time's an issue, you know, in the emergency department. Um, yeah. But if I get a chance when I'm getting set up with a suture tray or whatever it is, I may ask them, hey, well, what do you do? What do you, what do you do for a living? Or what do you, what's, uh, what's going on today? Or, or what, you know, I'll ask them some questions, which I find... I find it very interesting um, because what I'll do now even more than usual is I'll, as soon as you see somebody as a human being, you're making a bit of a judgment. Oh, I wonder if they're like this, or I wonder what the personality is like. Yes. And then you get into it. And and I find that fascinating to see how close you were. You know, we, in pro actors, they used to do, uh, like, like they, they would say, just look at you. This is your hit, right? Hmm. Okay. You're a steady person. Uh, you look rich or poor. You're, you know, whatever it was just based on how you look. And that's how they, be, that's how they said, this is mm. probably what you're going to be kind of cast for, what you're going to be seen for. Um, so I, I, I find I do that a bit more too. Yeah. One of the things that it's funny over the last week, for some reason, it just re week or two, it really, I really clocked at what I, what I have been doing. And I think it comes from my medical training, but also my acting training combined is being an observer of people because <clears throat> I think my medical training was really helpful with that, as you said, right? We can take a look at a person, how they move, how they speak, mm -hmm. their history, observing them, their characteristics, and make these snap judgments, which when time is an issue is actually extremely helpful. And is usually, you know, a lot of times was quite correct. But being an observer of people as characters has mm -hmm. been really interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Like just kind of yeah. clocking how people move and stuff like that. Like I was thinking about, I was um, on a flight to, this was the flight to Sundance and the um, yes. the flight attendant, the flight attendant was just this character of a person. And I just watched her the whole <laughs> 
time, how she moved. Yeah. And I was like, I don't I don't know if I ever really did that or clocked that I was doing that in my yeah. medical career. Obviously, we do do it. But mm. now being so aware of characters. Mm. Yes. It's being an observer of people. Because, again, that's the empathy building, right? Totally. And you think, yeah. and you also think, wow, this person would be a cool character in my script. Uh, you know, yes. like, exactly. <laughs> like, okay, I can visualize this. This would be great. Uh, but yeah, it's not just, you know, my job. It's it's life. Uh, yes. You know, I, I am certainly more observant. Uh, you know, just in line at Tim Hortons or something, you know, just watching who's there, how this person interacted at the cast register versus this person, completely different. Um, you know, and uh, everyone, because everyone has a story. Everyone has a whole life story. Yeah. You have no idea what's going on with that person. Um, and yeah, that empathy uh, certainly is, is is more present there. Uh, you know, it's you can't do it all the time. You can't always. You can't feel everything. You know, twenty four seven. You yeah. can't. You you know. Um, but I do find I do that more. Yeah. Has there been anything that has surprised you about the entertainment industry at all? Yeah, the lack of feedback. Oh, oh. God. In medicine, that's all we get is feedback. <laughs> that's all we get. Whether we want it or not, that's yeah. all yeah. we get. Where feedback's forced, like it's it's constant. <laughs> yes. You know, it's completely opposite. I'm like, so many crickets, Janet, so many. I'm like, yes. what? what? I spent a week on this audition. And I, I didn't hear anything. Is this normal? And yeah. like, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's normal. If you don't hear anything, yeah, but how do you know how long has gone by before you know you, they gave it to somebody else? Oh, oh, you don't know that. <laughs> it could be a month. You know, it could be a, it could be a couple of days. No idea. No idea. And I found that uh, very hard to deal with. Um, you get feedback in classes, of course, because that's what you're paying for. Um, uh, but when you know when you're auditioning for something, and especially you know some roles mean more to you than others. Some yeah. roles you don't book hurt more than others. And those ones you're like, oh man, what happened? Did something happen? Nothing happened. <laughs> but, you know, coming from our background, you're like, okay, someone needs to tell me what I did wrong. Uh, right? And that's the how we think, well, report. should I have studied more? Like, you know, it's, it's the doctor yes. in me and you that comes out. Did I not like study hard enough for this? You know, what was my, what was my grade on my audition? Um, you know, it's like, you can't grade art. Anyway, it's, 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 it's he, he, he keeps coming back because I've, I've been a doctor for so long and that's been the biggest part of my life really so far still, yeah. uh, compared to my acting career. Um, if I can call it a career. Um, but you know, it's one of those things where I found that a, a, a surprise. I actually yeah. didn't know that. Uh, when you do this on a professional level, these are things that people don't understand, you know, uh, even getting an audition. I don't think people understand how hard that is. You know, they may get 600 to 800 submissions for a two liner. And then, you know, nowadays with self taste, they may see 50. Then they may submit eight to 10, depending on the casting director. Um, some see less, some see more. Um, every casting director I hear says something slightly different, of course, but, um, and then someone else decides who gets it. And, and I'm like, do people understand how hard it is even to get those roles? Like it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's been a, a surprise. I didn't, I didn't understand that before I, I went into this, you know, uh, at all. I didn't really appreciate that. Um, not that I thought I'd start booking right away, but it, it's surprising the lack of, of feedback. Now people say, well, you get feedback indirectly. If they keep bringing you back, that means they like you. Um, that means you're doing something right. But I want to know, okay, what part am I doing right? <laughs> right? Okay, great, great. What, what, uh, which audition did that casting director like and which one did she not like? You know, it's, it's, uh, it drives me nuts. Uh, you know, um, so anyway, that's, that's been the biggest surprise. And honestly, it's something you just have to, this is how it is. What do you, yeah, so what do, what do you do to get, I was like, you can't get over it, obviously. There's nothing to do. But for yeah. us, I think, when it's just a, such a stark contrast 
between the career that we are in medicine and and acting the complete opposite side of the feedback spectrum how do you deal with that it's tough i mean i mean i'd say you know you have to have a bit of a you have to be mentally pretty strong and understand the system a little bit that helps mm. i think the more i understood how things work and how decisions are made in terms of casting uh helps helps a lot like i, I went to an actra yeah conference and um i remember those uh, jason knight was there there was they were they were doing actually they were showing a bunch of auditions um for the same role different different uh, you know actresses for this role and they showed us how the casting process worked. and oh, it was honestly eye-opening like i was like so the first actress that came up i remember fantastic amazing job lines were perfect did not stumble great lighting great wardrobe i'm like okay yeah that's what else do you want to see and then as you go through the other actresses you're like oh okay but that person yeah that person didn't really have their lines down and their lighting wasn't perfect but wow they really fit the character better and i'm like yeah, so it has nothing to do with the skills of that first one. Is the person right? And do I have the same opinion as the person next to me? Probably not. Huh. Um, and then the person they went with, uh, I'm like, yeah, that you knew within the first 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah, that's the right person. Huh. Nothing against the other. Nothing against the other actresses. They were fantastic, all of them, but in different ways. Wow. Just not right for this. Um, wow. So I felt that. That helped a little bit, um, understanding, you know, how the system kind of works. Um, hearing other even big actors talk uh, talk about this, like uh, I think I posted recently a George Clooney talking about this. He's like, I had a hundred auditions, I did not get a single booking, hundred, and he's like, no one ever gave me a job. Uh, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, well. <laughs> He's he's great. Uh, this this is not just us, uh, you know. And again, it's such a competitive industry. This is, you know, people who are in charge and 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 paying their money for these productions. Yeah, you know what? They do get to decide who they want in their production. Yeah. Who am I yes. to say? Okay, well, you should pick me. You know, you mortgage your house for this movie. Oh well, you you know. You should pick someone you're uncomfortable with, 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 you know, in your production, right? It doesn't make sense. Yes. So you have to understand what you're getting into and what it's about. I mean, and, and who the people are making these, these decisions. And you have to understand that it is a long game. You know, if you truly want to do this, you will book things at some point. You will, uh, whether they're big or small, whatever. Um, but you also, as you go through the industry, you also learn, and I've learned this and I've heard this so many times and I truly believe it now that you can make your own stuff too. Um, you know, if you really want to, if you're really in this to express yourself as an artist, nobody is stopping you from doing this. Hmm. All right. Yeah. We hear gatekeepers and that sort of thing. Look, we have my iPhone 15 films in 4k, you know, if I really, that's a, not that that's, that's necessarily the camera I'd use to film my movie, but you can and like, okay, make po post it on the web. Uh, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, I know it takes time. And I know there's always a little money involved, um, but there doesn't have to be a lot of money. And I, as you, as you network with people, as you get to know people, um, as you go through, you, you can start to uh, develop these things. I mean, you're a prime example of this. You know, your own production company. You're you are doing all kinds of amazing things, and you know, trying yeah, pitching shows like like. Yeah, look where you started. You're, you're taking you're taking control, right? Like you're 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 like, okay, you know what? I, I can do this too. Uh, yes, I will make my own stuff. I will make create characters and write characters that are important to me that mean something to me. I will tell stories that people have not heard that I want to tell, mm -hmm. and yeah. nothing is stopping you from doing that. So I think those are the things. I mean, there's still roles that I have not booked that I still think about to this day, 100%. And that's just who I am. That's just who I am as a person. 
I don't know if there's a way to get to ever change that about me. <laughs> That'll never change, I don't think, for certain things. There, are, I am certainly way better at forgetting about other some roles I didn't whatever I didn't get. And I, like okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, but but there are certain ones you're like, oh man, you know what? I thought that was the one. I, I felt right. I've even had feedback from casting directors on like, you know what, you were great. But <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> but whatever, you know, it's like okay, well, okay, you didn't cast me, whatever. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> I don't know if that makes you feel better or worse, but I think it still makes you feel better. You know, yeah, some people want I, to know this. Yeah, some people don't, but I think it does make me feel better. So. I think it does. And I think it, it depends on the person, right? Like, I think there are a lot of people who are innate creatives who are, and bless them, right? It's not me. It will never be me, no matter how much, like, mindfulness and meditation and yeah. artist way and all that crap that I do. I will never be the person who can say my art will speak for itself and I will throw the audition out the window. No, I am an analytical scientist who will <laughs> analyze this till the cows come home. And I love that about myself. Sorry, yes. I'm never going to be that person. Why would you change? And um, that's who you are. why would I change? That's who I am. And yep. it's just, it, that's what you get. <laughs> yep. And I think um, the biggest thing I wonder about is and that I struggle with is because again we come from the medical field where again we talked about how we get feedback all the time patients yell at us admin yell at us everyone yells at us and gives us feedback as an aside that's also made me very um able to take constructive criticism um say from like acting coaches and stuff like that where I remember having an acting coach being like uh so um just to preface this, this may sound a little mean. And I was like, do you be have mean. any idea? <laughs> be mean. I've yeah. had old yeah. white surgeons scream in my face that I'm a useless piece of shit. Like, do you have right. any idea the trauma right. that medical residency is? Bring yeah. it on. This is yes. acting. It's all fake. Go for it. I and we want it. that data. We want that data. We want, we want to know. Data. Like, yes. my therapist, my I, I'm in therapy. I can handle it, right? Yes. The yes. other, the other thing that drives <laughs> me insane, and about what you were saying about, oh yes, the person who got the role wasn't the one with the perfect lighting, with the perfect wardrobe, who had the lines perfect. What drives me nuts about that is that yes, that makes complete sense, but it means I have zero control on the yeah. outcome. Yeah. I can control things like my lighting, my yeah. word perfectness, even my talent, right? But the fact that I have zero control when I come from an industry where I must have all of the control. Yeah, it's hard. It's really, really hard to. Recall. But that's why you're you're doing what you're doing now. You're you're yeah. you're taking that control, right? This True. is why you're yes. you're like okay, well, this this lack of control is really bugging me and I need to do something about that. So yeah, this is what's driving you. Right. Um, yeah. you know, they always talk about as an actor, you know, pay attention to the stuff you can control, but there's so much that's out of your control. It's hard to ignore that. Um, I agree. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's tough. And, and, and this is why you're doing what you're doing. You're going to create your own stuff. Um, yeah. as well, why can't you? Yeah. Right. And it's funny, like I, I just got off, like right before we were chatting, I was chatting with, um, with our friend Nir, who is a social media influencer. And yes. he, that was his piece of advice being like, there is no barrier to entry right now. Yeah. You have your cell phone and you have social media, put yeah. footage up there. He's like, yeah. if you don't like doing it, then don't, that's fine. He's like, but yeah. you, there's no excuse for saying, oh, I don't know. It's like, no, you can mm. do it. You can do make it. something. Like, yeah, write something. Make, make something. something. Make something. It's hard. It's hard. It's, it's intimidating. So hard. It's you know. It's so funny when I uh, um, I wrote a, a short script and I sent it to a friend of mine, uh, Joshua Demers. He's a he's a producer director, and uh, the first thing he said to me was, "Congratulations on writing your first script and finishing it." I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "That is hard." He's and he's you know he's he's a he's a really great writer uh, as well and. Uh, uh, I'm like, oh, that's interesting point. 
um, that is, I guess, an accomplishment. Uh, whether you make it or whether it's good, doesn't matter. Just finishing. I mean, uh, I don't know who said this. Someone said this recently. And was it you or somebody else that, uh, or maybe you posted from Sundance that, you know, every film that's made is a miracle. <laughs> There's so yep. much involved yep. in making that movie. Like so many things have to go right. Um, yes on top of everything that goes wrong just to, to complete that movie. Uh, it's true. But you start with a short film. Uh, you know, short films is a great avenue to get into film festivals and network. It doesn't have to be long, like seven, eight minutes. Uh, I've read some of these festivals are accepting. That's doable in a weekend. Um, you know, as long as the writing is there, don't, don't you know, skip past good writing. Uh, and then plan, 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 right? Uh, and get it done. Um, I love editing myself. Once you get the footage, you can play with the editing and it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a creative, you know, outlet. Uh, I find it's, it's a lot of fun and get your friends to act, uh, act in it. You know, if you don't have lots of budget, always treat your, treat your crew and actors well, though. at least give them food. You have to, you know, yes. I've been, you know, yeah, fine. Don't pay me, but you know, I, I, I need to eat. I need to, I need to have bathroom facilities on site. I need to, you know, there's certain things you have to have. Uh, yes. And there's lots yes. of workshops, I think, out there where they talk about this. How do you make your first short film? And I think that you can watch that, whatever, YouTube, whatever, and, and learn about these things. But, you know, you don't have to make this epic feature film. Um, there are lots of great ways to, to break in. And if your film gets selected as a seven, eight minute film that you maybe put a couple hundred bucks into, hey, you did something, you know? Awesome. Do you have anything that you are looking forward to coming up this year? Yeah, uh, just uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, Reverse uh, 1999 got released. Uh, so it's a yeah, anime gotcha RPG uh, type game. Um, so it's great. I play a, a character named uh, Shemaine and uh, the game has really taken off. Um, mm -hmm. It's very popular um, globally. Not as much in North America. It is picking up here, but mobile games are are bigger in in China and these other other markets. Um, yeah. You know, the company that created the game is is located in Shanghai, and uh, it's uh, it's a fascinating game because it's such a diverse cast. Um, this particular story takes place in India, so you have a lot of interesting uh, characters. And it was fascinating to see it come out. I mean, uh, mm. the animation is, is incredible. Um, and uh, people are just posting all kinds of little clips from the game. And there are lots of, you know, Facebook groups and Instagram groups that are really promoting the game uh, with some cool fan art. And it's just it's just been really amazing to, to see this game come out. So it just got it just got released. Um, so that's that's one of the biggest things that uh, I think has happened for me uh, recently. So. We'll see. The auditions are starting again now, now that the writer strike is, is, is over. So those are starting to come in again, and we'll have to see what happens with uh, the rest of the year. As I said, I've taken a class, which I'm looking forward to, um, which is all about self-taping, which I think is um, interesting with Samora Smallwood. Uh, she's running this master's class uh, that I signed up for. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to auditioning and learning more and, and writing more. Uh, and certainly working with uh, with uh, the amazing people in this industry. I think I'm looking forward to all those. Hopefully 2024 is, is a great year, but like we keep staying over and over again, this is a long game. Not, <laughs> you know, we're, I'm looking five years, 10 years ahead, you know, forever. You can be an actor forever. So, Yes, totally. Do you have any final words of wisdom or advice? Oh, interesting. I mean, I'm not... <laughs> My 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 words of wisdom and advice may resonate with some people and not with others, but I can only speak from my my experience. Right? Um, it's been it's been a ride. I mean, uh, getting into acting, uh, it's been a lot of fun. People always say you have to know you want to do it, uh, you know, to actually continue with it. I, I think there's certainly some truth to that, but I think I'd add a little wrinkle to that. Like, yeah, I think you should try it before you make that decision. It's very hard to decide. Yeah, I really want to do this for a long period of time and 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 be okay with all the rejections because you have to be okay with that mentally. Um, 
and continue doing this. And I only, I only figured that out by, by actually trying and going on real sets, you know, and mm -hmm. I did, uh, I, I was background on a movie called downsizing. Um, Matt Damon was on that. It was so funny. I, I had zero lines of course, cause I was background, but Matt Damon kept laughing at me because I had this red turban. I had a, I had a pink jacket. I had this massive beer glass and he was laughing cause I wasn't really background. <laughs> it's like, I completely stood out. And I remember, I, I like, I, I, I just, I did not blend it. And, and it was funny because the director was like, okay, anybody who we kind of is noticeable from the last scene, you should probably not be in this scene. And I remember looking up and, and, and he was on top of a staircase and he looked down at me. He's like, Indy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, yeah, I'm leaving. <laughs> but it was stuff like that. that I'm like, this is really fun, but I want to do more. I want to try and, uh, you know, get some lines now and actually uh, take on an actual character because this is interesting being, being on camera and seeing what I look like. Um, so then I tried taking classes. So I think anybody who wants to get into this, you need to try. You need to do some things first before you can actually make that decision. And so take, take an actual professional class. Try it out because this is what it is, right? This is, you have to maybe try an audition or two and see if, and then if you don't get that audition or whatever it is, how did you handle that? How did you, was it one of those things like, yeah, that hurt, but I love this so much. I need to keep doing. I think you have to really try that first to decide because uh, my advice really is, you know, if you do want to do this, you have to really be committed. You have to take the time to do it. Don't expect overnight success get used to rejection and make sure you can handle it mentally. You know, I, I can't stress that part enough. It's not for everybody. Um, you know, it, it can be really hard uh, sometimes. You know, there's there's a lot of pain you don't see on actors when they talk in terms of the rejection they've also experienced before they book that role they're talking about. Um, and that's that's something that you have to be really strong and be okay with. And given that, the hardships that are involved and the time and commitment. Can you do this financially as well? You know, uh, you know, people say, oh, you have to give up everything else to do this. I'm not sure I completely agree with that. I think it would be dedicated. It would be committed. But you have to pay your bills. You have to eat. You have to support your family if you have a family to support. These are um, important things that I think um, you can't sacrifice everything in life for this. Yes, there are going to be sacrifices, 100%. You go into this industry, there are going to be sacrifices. Hey, I can't make that family event because I'm on hold for this or, you know, whatever it is. It's stuff that sometimes your family and friends never understand fully. Um, you might have to drop everything on, a, you know, in a heartbeat to go to an audition. Uh, these are these are hardships and, and hard choices you will have to make if you truly pursue this. So, you know, I feel you have to make an educated choice. Um but then, yeah, once you make that choice, commit, do whatever you can, make sure it's the right choice for you, but also don't be afraid to sometimes walk away from it because you can always come back. Thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you Indy for being my guest this week. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule, your busy doctor actor schedule to share your story with me and my listeners. I'm so, so excited and thrilled for everything you're doing in this industry. I mean, not just the entertainment industry, in the medical industry as well too. I'm just so, so, so excited that we have met and we get to be in each other's orbits. You are just the coolest, coolest person. I hope you will all tune in next week for another episode of Second Act Actors. Bye.